they're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country sound. We'll all be flying higher than a jet airliner. And if you want a little bang in your yin yang, come along. Come on along and welcome aboard Indiana Sports Bee with Coyle Larry coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios on this Monday. It's August 10th. We appreciate you for joining us. Big program as well, uh, or as always today, Teddy Greenstein, Greenstein, I should say, from the Chicago Times, covered the Big Ten for a long, long time. And man, I can't think of a more apropos day than to talk to him as uh, things seem to be in flux right now as far as what's going to happen with the college football season. We thought we were kind of over that hurdle. Well, not really. We had hoped we were over that hurdle. But um, a lot of chatter going on yesterday and last night. A lot of stuff on uh, social media about, about college football being canceled. That has not happened. Or big, about the Big Ten being canceled, at least. That has not happened. So uh, we, we still have hope. And we're going to talk to Teddy about that. Also, uh, I'm going to talk with Todd about the big games this weekend. Man, Indy Elite, the uh, battle for the brands, Indy Heat, Trey Coffin, Logan Duncan, and he dunked on them. All right, Logan Duncan just annihilated people, uh, dominated Caleb first, dominated everything, and they played very, very well together. Uh, I'm talking about Trey Coffin and Logan Duncan, of course. We'll talk more about that. Bryce Hopkins who is a, uh, a Louisville recruit from Illinois, has decommitted to Louisville in lieu of potential um, NCAA infractions that, that may be coming their way. I've been saying this and saying this. Todd's on. He's uh, He stepped away for a second. But I've been saying this and saying this. This has to catch up with Louisville, the fact that they are going to get hit with added Penalties from the NCAA. They're not getting out of this, folks. So why these people thought that they're it's just going to continue as normal is beyond me. It's not. But uh, he cited that as a, as a reason for him getting out. I don't think he's going to be the last one. But the more important thing is he's a target for Indiana, and there is mutual interest between him and Indiana. And I talked to Alec Lasley this morning from the Hoosier.com, and he said that, um, he spoke with someone yesterday and told him that he reached out to Hopkins and there is definitely mutual interest. Go to the Hoosier.com to keep up with that. But mutual interest, he's a 6'7 wing. Um, the, the, this kind of seems to be the linchpin for what this team is going to be roster-wise. But that would be a, a, a an, another incredible get for Archie, and there's no reason that he can't because there's no doubt to me that he's going to land Trey Kaufman. I mean, him and Logan Duncan were just a two peas in a pod. Man, they they just they they like playing together. You can tell that. So um, I don't want to make a prediction for a high school kid, but Todd Leary, there's no doubt in my mind that. Uh, we're going to be seeing Trey Kaufman in an Indiana uniform next year and potentially earlier. If there's no high school season, I saw that there's potential. He would come up early and he's, you know, he's smart enough to have already been prepared to do that. Yeah. I mean, looking at it, you know, on paper, looking at all the factors that are involved in a recruiting process, it certainly leans towards the idea that he will go to Indiana. Um, Playing with Logan Duncan is just a, that's a bonus. I mean, it's a comfortability side of it, which is a huge factor. And, you know, he's played with some of these other guys and Christian Lander and, and Anthony Leal. He's played with some of these guys or against them in AAU stuff. They practice together. Everything leans that direction. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. There are guys that, you know, shock you and something stands out or, um, you know, it, it, whatever. But if he does come, it, it kind of changes the whole perspective of, I mean, Archie, I think right now, I mean, you, you mentioned it several times before Archie's got a stranglehold on recruiting in the state of Indiana. And, um, you know, if he lands Trey Kaufman, there's really not a single guy so far that he's really wanted. I don't think that I can think of that he didn't get. 
Uh, Keon Brooks comes yeah, to mind. Nice bless, blessing in disguise. But uh, regardless of that, let's talk about Logan Duncan. The man went off. The man dominated. Um, well, he dominated everybody, but he also played well with Trey Kaufman, passing out of the post. But 27 points, I think, uh, is what he ended up, ended up with. But held Caleb first to eight points. Of course, Caleb first to Purdue – uh, commitment, but that's that's impressive to me. It is. Uh, there's, <clears throat> you know, I didn't get to watch the game very closely, so I, I didn't see the little. I don't know if Caleb first just didn't shoot well, or if he, I, I don't know what the situation was. But you've got to give a ton of credit to Logan Duncan's defense. Logan, man. he was. Yeah, you have to because in an and he AAU enjoys game, playing defense. Eight points in an AAU game is is like two points in a regular college basketball game. I mean, you you can you can luck your hustle your way into six points. So in, in AAU, I, I'm saying, but you know, this is, uh, it sure changes the expectation level. I think everyone right now is, is kind of banking on the Trey Kaufman thing. And I think Logan Duncan's kind of proving just a little bit. I mean, I've watched that team play twice and Logan Duncan has outplayed Trey Kaufman in both of those games. Well, they're different type of players, but yeah, he's definitely. Seems I mean, when I'm, to I'm be, just talking about impacting the game. I'm not talking about their particular what they particularly did, but how they impacted the game. Logan Duncan. I mean, I, I, this is this is a bold statement to make, but Logan Duncan has completely revamped his rebounding attitude. I'll say, and he has been a monster on the boards. No, it's not absolutely. been against Big Ten and, opponents. <laughs> and see, exactly, that's the thing I'm going to say is. He's kind of a little bit of an advantage because not everybody has a, a big man like Logan Duncan, so they, they're not everybody can contend with him. But he has made it a point. He put on weight. He got stronger. He's working. All these things that you're talking about are things he's worked on. So, no, he's gotten better. He's gotten markedly better at a lot of these things and noticeably better. But he wants – he has the drive, the desire. He wants to play – not just play defense. He wants to play good defense. That in of itself is a game changer in a lot of kids. It is. And, and you know, here's, here's a way to look at it. From, and, and I don't know Logan Duncan personally, but, I, you know, I've talked to his dad just a little bit, and I've, uh, we've talked to the kid. I've watched him, trans, you know, transpose his game or transpire his game and, and expand it into something that's it's much better than what it was six months ago even. And – I, th- I think if you take a kid, for example, that you that you come in as a recruit, I think Archie Miller could go to Logan Duncan and say, hey, look, I, I need you to play 20 to 25 minutes a game, and I need you to try to get 10 rebounds in every game. And I think Logan Duncan would look at that as that's his, that's his best way to make a contribution to this team this year. And I think that he would do everything in his power to do that. I don't think, and this is not to pick on Justin Smith, but I don't think – this year coming up, if if Archie Miller went to Justin Smith and said, hey, I need you to play 25 minutes a game and get 10 rebounds, I think Justin Smith would be like, well, what about the 15 points that I need to get? And, and I, just, I just think they have different attitudes. And so that's why I'm – I mean, I hope Logan Duncan and Trey Kaufman are able to figure out a way to get there in January. It would be unbelievable. Well, let me tell you what kind of having a different attitude is. Having a different attitude is, you know, there's been talk of – of the if and this is a big if and let's hope this doesn't even come to fruition but if the high school season was canceled because of COVID-19 uh Trey Kaufman has said that he would make his college decision early he would enroll early which means January does that favor IU with the question coming from Tim yeah I I don't think it matters I, I think Trey Kaufman is going to end up at Indiana I, I don't want I hate getting into into the prediction thing uh, for a couple things. Number one, it takes away from the kid. Let them do their deal. But I, I don't see there's any place he's going. There's no – you just saw his partner dominate the guy that's going to Purdue. He ain't going to Purdue. He's going to Indiana. They're going to be loaded. They want to, good players, want to play with good players. And Indiana is trending back in that direction. And that's where he's going to go. It's closer to home. But the fact that, and he, that he says that he – could potentially redshirt if he came in early. That's a that that's a kid that's thinking with his head already. He's and that tells me 
he may be here for a minute. He's not planning on someone who's who's already got it in the back of their mind about leaving early, where most of the time we hear, I just want to look forward to the next eight months of my life. I just want to look forward to the next you know short period of my life. Not him. He's looking at it on the long-term scheme. Yeah, and and you know, I know you're you are a lot more bold in predicting that this is where he's going to go. I just I think there's factors that are involved in it. If if you're talking about schools in the state of Indiana, I'm not just because I'm an Indiana grad, but Indiana is the only one that makes sense. But what we don't know is is the personal side of it, and whether I mean there could be someone in his family. I, I'll tell you, for example. There, there was. I, were, I really wanted to go to Kansas when I was growing up. I just liked Kansas. I liked watching them play. I liked Roy Williams a ton. I had great interaction with Roy Williams at Five Star Camp, and it always made me want to go to Kansas because he was there. Not because I had any really other tie to Kansas. It's because Roy Williams was so comfortable and nice to me that, that it just made a difference. And that's what we don't know about Trey Kaufman. And, and I, I used Roy Williams as an example in that because we know North Carolina just made him an offer, and I'm not tying those together at all. I don't think he's going to North Carolina. But what we don't know is the little intricacies of, of the recruiting process. And who's been nice? To, yeah, who's, who's – you know, I mean, from our standpoint, from the media standpoint and our fan base standpoint – it sure looks like North Carolina came in awful late, but we don't know that he could have, he could have been an AAU program eight, you know, six years ago, he could have been talking to Roy Williams or John Calipari or anybody else. And I just, mm-hmm. I don't think we, Indiana would lose him to Purdue or Notre Dame or Butler, I, but I, I, it would not shock me if they lost him to Kentucky or North Carolina or Duke or somewhere somebody like that. I'm with you. I think it makes the most sense. He's a great kid. His family's great. All of that is good. And Indiana's an hour drive away to watch his games. I think that factors in. Oh, absolutely. I think definitely in Indiana's favor. Yeah. Uh, it all does, I think. And I just think that uh, the comfortability, you talk about relationships. Well, you I got agree. the relationships where the kids are on the team already. That's another thing. Um, so it makes the most sense. It all points. Everything's pointing in that but, direction. But we're in, a, we're in a world that isn't making a whole lot of sense right now. So yeah. it wouldn't shock me. Well, I, I definitely see him landing in, in Bloomington, no doubt about that. But uh, I think that the thing that uh, fans should be happier about is the fact that he's looking at it in a, a long-term stance, uh, potentially redshirting. Who the hell mentions on their own the potential of redshirting now? Every kid wants is a me, 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 play, 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 now, now, now. And he's like, yeah, I may end up coming early if it works out this way and I could potentially redshirt. Da, da, da. Dude, he's a thinker, man. He's he's a thinker. Uh, I, I'm, yeah, I mean, I, as a person who's even been through the redshirt process, I can tell you, I I'm not even exactly sure how it would work if he came in and redshirted. If so, let's say he gets to enroll in January in the in the you know second semester, then you know I'm assuming he'd be eligible to play after X number of practices. Or I mean, well, we, see, we saw a kid at Kentucky and Kansas last year. Yes, he's that. eligible immediately. Yeah, he's eligible. so. So at that point, like he could play in January if you redshirt. So if if you redshirt that year, then could he play next season? Yes, at the beginning of the season, even though it's he, in the same calendar year, he can red, he can play whenever he wants and does not have the redshirt year. But the but fact I mean that's what I'm saying. Would he lose that redshirt year if all of a sudden next next November he played? No, that's next season. It's a new season. Okay. This would be a red shirt for this season. Hey, we got to take a break. Teddy Greenstein from uh, the Chicago Times coming up next. We're going to talk about the Big Ten. Stay tuned. We're back with that on Indiana Sports Beat coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Back right. No. Teddy Greenstein's at 940. He's in Chicago. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. 
pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Club and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. This is former Indiana basketball player Brian Evans, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat with Jim Coyle. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat. Of course, coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios on this Monday. It's August 10th. And the uh, biggest conversation uh, over the last 24 hours has really been whether or not will college football survive. Man, all of a sudden, things just kind of broke loose yesterday. And we kept hearing, oh, the Big Ten's going to cancel this, that, and the other thing. And uh, that did not come to be, thank goodness. Um, Did they make an announcement yet? Nope. Well, they don't call emergency meetings on a Sunday very often. So, But they did not do it. And that's even shocking more so. I mean, it's like they're, 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 they're holding out, hoping. But I'm like, gosh, dang it, guys. What? I, I don't understand what people expect. Do they expect zero cases here? No, we're not going to have zero cases. Um, well, you know, I said this last week, and I think college football, you know, and the NFL, th- their model is more like, the major league baseball, which has not been successful than, than, you know, the NBA where they're actually put them in a bubble and they're, they're locked up there. I mean, they're, they're, they're for lack of a better way to put it. I mean, they're, they're in their own world and major league baseball has not done that because it does, it's, it's almost not feasible to have that many teams play a whole regular season and do it. And, you know, I, I just don't see how, uh, I don't see how f- college football and the NFL are going to survive this way because Major League Baseball has failed completely. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about that. And I think that maybe they didn't take it as seriously in the beginning as they should have. Um, we don't know. But the NBA is working like a charm. Yeah, it is. I mean, there is a potential. The, the Can you imagine, about, imagine seeing Indianapolis? Football, yeah, I know. But the hard part about football is – is you know you can't you can't you know put guys in a bubble for two months and play a full season and the playoffs, and that's what they're going to be able to do in basketball. I mean, you can't play four games in a week. You can't play back to backs in football, and that's I just it it's unfortunate. I mean, believe me, I love watching college football on television as much as every person there is. Believe me, and I don't want it to be the case. I just don't. I don't have an in my mind, I can't wrap my brain around how they're going to pull it off. I don't because you know I said it before, Jim. If 
if one player dies, it, it's lights out. It's going to shut everything down. Shut everything. It'd be more than that. Yeah. It, it would, uh, uh, and, and you have, you don't have to go too far. You have a football player right at Indiana that got it and is dealing had, with issues, but right. uh, did, did not just get over it. Like some, yeah, some of us have been lucky enough to do. And he's a young kid and all that. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's, We'll, we'll talk to Teddy about that. Teddy Greenstein. I, I mentioned, I'm sorry, I had said he was going to be on with us next. He's actually coming on in the next uh, segment. He's in Chicago, so I tried to give him a little extra time not to be on early. Long time, uh, long time senior writer there in Chicago covering the Big Ten. So looking forward to talking to him about that. Uh, Battle of the Brands over the weekend. We talked a little bit about that. Indiana Elite shows they are definitely the program right now, Todd Leary. Yeah, and they have been they have been for a while. Um, you know, Mike Fox, who's in charge of that uh, Indiana Elite program, and the Indiana Elite program, you know, they've built themselves up to what they are. So I don't want to act like you know they just inherited something, but they're just a, a you know an extension of the Bloomington Red program that was started you know years and years ago. Um, you know, all the way back when when we played or when I played in it. So it, it's. It's the program to be in. There's the they've got the most amount of teams. They host the most tournaments. You know they they always have. And if you're not familiar with how the AAU programs are set up, I mean they always have one or two teams within an age group that are kind of their national, you know, profile travel teams that play in in the bigger national tournaments. And then they've got, if you're Indiana Elite's case, I mean they might have as many as. 20 to 30 to 40 more teams within one single age group. Um, you know, they can have a team out of Evansville and a team out of, of uh, New Albany and, and Fort Wayne and South Bend. I mean, there's just – Indianapolis probably has, you know, a dozen you know, other Indiana elite teams besides the one Logan Duncan and Trey Kaufman play on. Yeah, and they go deep, 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 deep. But um, some great basketball over the weekend. Uh, also, the PGA – how about the finish, man? I thought I, I would have bet a million dollars there was going to be a playoff. If you just said, all right, I'll give you the field uh, for that, I, I would have bet I'd have taken everything and bet, no doubt, a multiplayer playoff. Playoffs? You had like, there was like a seven guys tied at one point, uh, nine, 10, 11 within a stroke. It was the, one of the craziest finishes I've ever seen. And all of a sudden, whoop. Nope. Let me separate myself. Yep. Boom. Go One ahead and shot. drive. The, go ahead and drive the green on a par four and make the putt. Yeah, that that uh, that separates yourself. But it One was, shot changed that yeah. entire tournament. It did, and it was. You know what? It was an exciting, fun. Tra- if you if you like golf, like I, you know, I there's some people you can't talk into. It's like you trying to talk me into watching NASCAR. Um, it's just not for me and, and golf, like I love it on TV. It's one of the best spectator sports. I, I love, I fell in love with it in 1991 PGA at Crooked Stick with John Daly. It's the first, uh, PGA event I'd ever gone to. And I absolutely fell in love with it right in the middle of my basketball career, which is crazy. Um, but it, I, it was, it's what made me love golf. And if you watch that tournament this weekend, I mean, they showed a statistic at one point in time of the top 25 players in the tournament. At that, at that particular moment, there was only two players over the age of 35. Everyone else was between 21 and 35 out of that top 25, which just is absolutely incredible. It used to take you, you – all you got to do is listen to Nick Faldo talk on the weekends, and, and he'll mention it several times. It used to take players four, five, six years – to get comfortable and win on the PGA tour. And these guys are winning in their first, you know, that's the second um, major event that Colin Car was played in and he, and he wins it. It's just, it's amazing. Also a uh, basketball news, Bryce Hopkins, a Louisville commit decommits from there, citing uh, what's going to possibly befall them later on from the NCAA. And Bryce Hopkins is an IU target. Now there is definitely mutual interest between these two, he comes from Illinois. He's that he's that exact size that Archie loves. He's a wing six. They got him listed at six six. I've seen six seven. Um, but he's twenty one or twenty two. He's twenty one. He's well, twenty one. There's only three scholarships rem- next year. Remember too, that man. bank. Remember that banking the scholarship thing. <laughs> well, that's gone though. 
Now you got the Christian Lander took that this year. So you got three available next year, I believe. And you've got Trey Kaufman, Logan Duncan. No, maybe. but but Christian Lander took Justin Smith's. There's still one available. Yeah, I got to look to see. But um, I'm pretty sure there's still one available because they talked about banking it. Remember? Oh, yeah. They, well, they banked a scholarship for like the last three streak. Yes. Yeah. Well, that, that's that's for this exact purpose. <laughs> well, yes. When you don't have someone to use it on, it's convenient. <laughs> that it works that way. But, uh, yeah, Bryce Hopkins, definitely interest between the two. Um, you know, obviously it looks like he was going to Louisville, so he doesn't want to get too far from home. He's from Illinois. This fits right into that. Um, actually a little closer for him. But, uh, again, this would just be another big-time get for Archie, and it would really just continue to to add – to this roster, exactly what he needs as a formula quickly to get there. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I, they're just um, – I don't. I haven't seen him play enough. I read the information yesterday about the decommitment, so I, I got that. And I, I just don't know enough about him as a player. I mean, I would – if you were – if you had your hopes, you know, if I was able to hope and say what he was, I would hope he's a bigger, you know, like a Trace Jackson Davis type versus a small forward type player because I think that's the area they need the most. I mean, rebounding is, is going to be a gigantic key, and that's why I keep saying all along, Race Thompson, I think Race Thompson has the advantage over Jerome Hunter because I think he's a better rebounder, and and I think rebounding is going to be a gigantic key. Now, offensively, there's no question Jerome Hunter is is better for Indiana, but I'm just not sure they're going to look to that position as needing you know tons of shots. Yeah, again, uh, without looking back up to see how many scholarships there are, a point guard is something they have to have next year because he's going to lose Rob Fennessey, and then the following season you could potentially you lose Christian Lander. So you have to have a point guard in that class as well, uh, which has been something Archie seems like he's been chasing since the moment he got here. Uh, he has been chasing a point guard since the moment he landed, starting with Rob Finnessy, and then he's been trying to get a backup ever since. And until getting Christian Lander had not been successful, but uh, but yeah, they'll, they'll, that that's an area where they have to deliver because, like I just said, Rob's gone after this year; it's his last year. And we no, no, don't no, no, no. Rob's got two more years. Rob's just going to be a junior. Right, you're, you're right. I'm my Bob. I was thinking about Durham. But you still have to have that backup point. You guard. got. You need someone that sees a year underneath Rob Fennessey. Yes, and yes, Lander. that's you, the whole point. You've got to train totally them. You've got to bring them along, and so and the, and got, look at that. That's what was happening. I mean, Christian Lander was going to be not this coming season. He was going to be that next one. It's an absolute bonus <laughs> that he one qualifies and two is good enough to come in and play right away this coming season. So it's you. You can never be upset with that but the timing had worked out perfectly i mean archie had recruited it perfectly now i think it's a situation you've got to you know you've got to look to get someone for that 2023 class rob Fennessy will be here two more years christian lander could possibly be a one and done yeah i don't think i don't think so just because of his i don't A's. think so either but he's possible oh absolutely possible absolutely but did you, uh did you, twi- did you read the twitter rumors yesterday about uh, Bruiser Flint. Go oh, absolutely. Yeah, we got him. Forgot to forgot to bring that up. Yes, Flint. Uh, the, he's got a long time relationship with Calipari. John Calipari, so that would not surprise me. Just never, never something you want to put on your resume. Now the bigger question is that if that were to happen, that that'll be fun because that'd give us something to talk about. Number <coughs> Mike one, Miller. <coughs> Mike Miller. Then. <laughs> forgot about Dagon Miller, kid. See, looking towards next year, look at this. Think about this. Logan Duncan, Trey Kaufman, Mason Miller, and whoever you want to add to that. I don't even – it doesn't even matter to me. Those are three big-time recruits right there. They are. Think, There's no doubt about it. And – Remember, you remember I said this a while back. This is, it falls right into us talking about banking the scholarships. I said this a while back that it, I think based on what you saw happen at Oklahoma State, where they can and, and the kid at was it, it's Michigan State, right? Where the Michigan State's hiring the kid's dad as an assistant to come there. 
and it's not illegal. It's totally within the, you know, the, the rules of the NCAA. I think te- I think you're going to see teams start banking coaching positions. And this, we know Mike Miller was a coach at, at Memphis and, you know, I don't want to say unexpectedly resigned, but hadn't been there very long and he resigned and nobody really has known what the reasoning for it is. But would getting just him, would that just, just be to land his son? It, you can say it could just be to land his son, but when you've got a guy that's played in the, you know, was so successful in college basketball and played in the NBA forever, I don't really know that you could look at that from a standpoint and say there aren't other things that he would definitely bring to the table. Um, you know, he is, he's been successful everywhere he's been. Um, you know, he's got a very talented son. That whole dynamic, like, look, as, as I say it all and I say, you know, all that would kind of fit together. It would also be an unbelievable dynamic that I just don't know. You know, one of the things you fight in AAU basketball from the kindergarten all the way up to high school is daddy ball. And you get the guys who their dad's the coach and they always end up being the point guard or they're they're the big guy. And the offense is always run through the dad's son, no matter who it is. I'm a prime example. You can ask every kid that's played on my team. My son handled the ball 95% of the time. And, and it's just human nature that you, that that's the way it happens. And I don't necessarily love that dynamic, but that's kind of what college basketball is going to. Not a lot of change over in Archie's uh, staff since he's been here. I mean, of course, he's just going into his fourth season, but just had the one. Uh, and that was actually, I'd say that was, that would still be the same. Mutual. If it, it was a mutual he, decision. Um, maybe. <laughs> uh, but there's not been a lot of turnover, which is good. Uh, and, and again, we get back to the, I, I don't care if the guy's got Indiana connections personally. We've seen Archie Miller didn't have any Indiana connections. Is, right. he, ha- is he having problems recruiting the state? No, you don't have to have them. Is it better? Of course it is, but you don't have to have them. Just get the good, get what's best, get the best that you can get the best assistant coach, the best recruiter, whatever it is, just get the best you can get. They don't have to have connections to the school. I don't think. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I want to give, I, I, because I give him, I take credit away from him for, and I'm going to talk about Romeo Langford for a second, but I think you got to give Archie Miller credit for landing Romeo Langford. I think a lot of these other recruits have happened because of that. And, and, a lot of that – one thing you can say about Romeo Langford, whether you think his career in one year at Indiana was successful or not successful, is it has been kind of – when you talk about stepping stones and getting recruits, it was the first step. It was the very first foundation of recruiting success for Archie Miller. And that, I don't think you can say, didn't influence the fact of Trace Jackson Davis coming there, which I think we can all agree – is is a gigantic step and is awesome from so many different levels when you look at not only what he does on the floor, but he's a good person. It looks like kids want to play with him. He's a good teammate. And and he's the kind of guy that you'll – I think we could look at this 12 years from now and think back on it and think Romeo was the first big get for Archie, but Trace Jackson Davis was kind of the guy that that really put him over the hurdle from the standpoint of being able to land – almost any recruit they want. Well, there's exact law truth to that. And Trace Jackson Davis has actively been a recruiting partner for him. Sure. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what I mean. That's It's not just what he does on the court. It's the other aspects of it. And he's able to do that because he's fun to play with. He's a good teammate. There's a lot to be said about being a good teammate. And, you know, I don't – I've not been in the locker room with him. It's very difficult for me to come out and say this, but I watch it. I think more closely than the average person. And I will tell you, he certainly appears to be a great teammate. Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago times is going to join us next. Uh, We're going to talk about big 10 and uh, the scuttlebutt going on there, whether or not we'll have college football. You're listening to Indiana sports beat coming to you from the golf club, Eagle point studios. And we're back with more right after this.
Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let Drs. Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Club and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tee time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary. Indiana Sports Beat is now a part of the Rivals Network. You can go to thehoosier.com to sign up. It's free. Catch the show there each day live or at your convenience. You can also like or follow us on Facebook, follow the show's rebroadcast anywhere you podcast. If we're not on a radio station where you live, we should be. Let your local station know they need to carry Indiana Sports Beat with Coyle and Leary or simply go to thehoosier.com. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit fda.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, this is Jordan Hall, former Indiana Hoosier. Keep up with Indiana Sports on Indiana Sports Beat. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Speed coming to you on this Monday, August 10th from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios, as always. Joined now by Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago Times, longtime writer for the Chicago Times. Covered the Big Ten for a long time, and I cannot think of anyone more apropos to have on today. First of all, Teddy, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. You got it, guys. Good morning. Man, uh, everything. every time we, we think we've gotten by a hurdle, it just seems like another one pops up in front of us. And a lot of scuttlebutt yesterday started happening with the, the Big Ten potentially canceling football season. That Luckily, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, I don't know if that's going to change. But, man, it's just saying we can't have a day to enjoy much, Teddy. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, coronavirus is uh, pretty relentless. And, um, you know, we're seeing its effect on college football, as we obviously did uh, in early and mid-March on that March 11th day when we were in Indianapolis and found out, you know, the basketball tournament had to be canceled. And now, um, obviously, it's it's trending really, really strongly towards football not being played. So it's uh, it's sad, and um, I'm sure we'll know something in the next few days. And, and I know that we, we always, no matter what the tragedy is, whether that's a tornado or a death or whatever, we, we get by it, and we'll get by this. But this is going to be devastating to to the Big Ten, to college football, to kids. I mean, it, it's the, the trickle down effect is just I don't even know where it stops. To be honest with you, it's it's so true because um, you know it's probably going to affect tons of non revenue sports. Um, as you guys know, I mean, sports departments are not run like a business right now. There are really only two teams that make money, and those two support all the other varsity sports. So. You know, I think Ohio State has like 34, 35 varsity sports, so only two of them bring in all the cash. So 
it's probably going to affect those, you know, the non-reps, and then it's definitely going to affect these athletic departments. Um, you know, a lot of people around the country have been feeling it. Uh, you know, at the Tribune, we were lows, um, and yeah, I'm sure there's going to be mass layoffs at uh, athletic departments because football revenue is like between 50 and maybe up to $100 million a year for these departments. It's unbelievably hard to uh, move on without You still have him? Still there? Oh, sorry. Alex. Yeah, and I was going to say, well, the Big Ten is probably in the best situation to handle it. They're also going to take is the biggest hit, maybe, because they, they had a much more successful the Big Ten network. Uh, they stand to lose probably more than any other conference. Maybe. I mean, it's interesting. I was talking to somebody at, um, in the Big East. And the Big East obviously doesn't have football, so if you don't have football, you're not going to miss football revenue. So, uh, you know, those schools obviously are not going to be as affected as much. But right when you're talking about the Big Ten and, you know, these giant stadiums, Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin, Iowa, they bring in a ton of money, and that's money that these schools have been accustomed to having every year. In, in Northwestern, they're in Chicago, so this their town itself is not going to be hurt nearly like in Ann Arbor, Bloomington, East Lansing, all these small towns where these college, Big Ten colleges are. They are basically wrapped around these colleges, and, and it's just, again, I talked about that trickle-down effect, where no tailgating, all that thing, all that stuff that happens every Saturday in the Big Ten and everywhere, but it, it's life as we know it is possibly going to take another major hit. Yeah, that's such a great point, and that's the thing. I mean, is college football even yeah, college football without the tailgating and without the crowds? Because, you know, best-case scenario this year, I think you'd have no tailgating and maybe crowds limited to, like, 20%. So, no, man, this virus has gotten the best of us. Um, it absolutely sucks. <laughs> Everything that's happened, you know, the fact that the best case is uh, not even a really good case, I think, tells you what it is, but it's so true. I mean, think about all those businesses that thrive on those six, seven, or eight uh, fall football Saturdays. I feel terrible for everybody who uh, you know who loses money and is, is going to be damaged. Do you, is there a, a, any percentage of a chance that this season happens? I mean, five percent, ten percent. I mean, yeah. You know, I, I was talking to somebody late last week, and we were making our estimates, and I had said, uh, "All right, I'll say twenty percent chance that it starts, one percent chance that it finishes." And he looked at me like I, I was being the most negative guy in the world. And then two <laughs> days later, it looks like you know to say twenty percent chance that it starts looks like uh, are you crazy? I mean, it looks more like five percent. So I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, you know, maybe they, they push it down, and then maybe there's a breakthrough with testing. Like if they told us tomorrow that there was a way to rapidly test these guys where you, know, you could wake up at 6.30, get a test, and know by 7 or 7.30 whether it's positive or not. And then if it's positive, you wouldn't walk in the football complex and maybe they could do it. But we just don't seem to be there on testing yet. Yeah, yeah that, that seems, seems to be the problem is, is we're behind on everything. And, and uh, unfortunately, as a country, we're, we seem to be taking the biggest hit. We have the most cases and uh, it, it's not a great look. I wish we would have been a little bit more prepared for that because last spring when this happened, we were all this jaws on the ground. But no way in the world did any of us think that come this fall, we're going to be doing it all over again. And that's what stings, right? I, I mean, we kind of all suffered in March and April and we're staying inside doing all the things we should have. And yet still, I mean, these cases, uh, obviously we, we saw the brutal rise in, in, in July. So, man, um, we got to hope a vaccine comes <laughs> for a million reasons, one of which is so, so we can get our sports back the way we're accustomed. You're in Chicago. You're at the heart of the Big Ten. What's What's the pulse like there? Yeah, I mean, I just, there's just a feeling that, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be canceled soon. That's certainly the concern. I mean, I think there's some schools that probably want to play. I mean, you hear a lot about Penn State. Um, so I think that's why a decision has not been made yet. Uh, maybe it's six, maybe it's 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, but, you know, they can't go on if, if more than a couple of Big Ten schools don't want to play. And... Um, you know, I think the presidents that are being more cautious are probably going to end up convincing the presidents who are, are a little more willing to roll the dice. 
So when you, when when we talk about, I mean, I've read the articles a couple different ways. When you talk about them not playing, are they talking about pushing the season back and and, and having it, you know, more in a winter ish time frame slash spring. spring, or are they are they talking about just canceling altogether? Well, I or mean, both. If, if they cancel it, they're not going to say. I mean, I don't think they would rule out the spring. Uh, I mean, if Kevin Warren comes out this week and says we're not playing fall football. Um, you know, I think then they start to look into the possibility of the spring. Obviously, that's you know, six months away, so who knows what everything's going to look like in six months. I don't see spring football as particularly viable. Um, you know, I think to two main reasons. One, I just don't think it's right to ask college athletes to play twice in one calendar year. And then I think anybody with really any NFL hopes is not going to play. So, I don't know, do you want to have Ohio State without its seven best players up against Michigan? Is that really fair? I, I just don't. I don't really see the upside. I mean, I think the only upside then is, you know, give us some entertainment and recoup some money, but I don't think that's really worth it. I, I would just sort of put all the eggs into the 2021 basket at that point, but I, I think they'll, I think they would certainly look into the spring. Yeah. I, I'm asking you like you, uh, like, like you're the decision maker and I don't mean it to be that way, but I, I've just read enough articles about it that I haven't seen them address the fact of, so let's say they either cancel the football season or, or move it back to the spring. What does that do from the standpoint of basketball starting in November? Do they then move that because it's a winter sport? Do they do they still move it back and start it in the next calendar year, or would it go ahead and be able to start in November? Well, Have they talked about that at all? No. My sense on basketball is that they're going to do uh, conference only, um, and, and I could definitely envision. Conference only, you know, starting in early January. Um, by then, hopefully, we'll have a vaccine. I mean, hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll we will have made some advancements. Um, I, I, I think there's reason for optimism with basketball. You know, obviously, much smaller teams, not really a full-on contact sport. Um, I think hoops can happen, but you know, if you ask them about it now, they'll say, "Well, it depends on the science, depends on the testing." So here we are on August 10th. Um, you know. What's our world going to look like on, say, uh, November 10th? Well, I just got a, I got a text from a writer from the Hoosier.com. Uh, talk says that Dan Patrick is reporting that the Big Ten had an internal vote. By a 12-2 to 2 margin, league members opted on not having a football season. Nebraska and Iowa were the only schools that voted uh, to play this fall. Uh, he said that apparently that uh, we'll, we'll hear about this tomorrow. So uh, not going to be surprised if it happens. Uh, it was, I wouldn't have been anyway, but now this just continues to add to that. But it seems like it all started with the Mac. And the Mac truthfully did this because of money issues. They, they lost all of those those three games that each of their teams got to play against teams for paydays went away. That kind of really changed their season, but it has caused that it's been the domino that has really started this thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think so. I mean, the big 10 wasn't really worried about the Mac. They weren't really worried about UConn. Um, a- absolutely right. You know, I, I mean, the Mac and, and UConn, they can say, Oh, well, we're doing this because we care about, you know, health and safety and being. but obviously it's about finances. Um, those schools don't bring in that much to start with. And then, as you mentioned, when you take away the guaranteed games, uh, they become, you know, financial losers, essentially. I mean, the, the, those programs are going to lose money. And then for them to go through the testing protocols where they're testing their guys a couple times a week, and then are they liable for lawsuits, um, you know, if players get sick? So, yeah, I mean, that was a, a, a really wise decision for a league like that. The only leagues that could theoretically do this are the ones that, uh, you know, bring in a mass amount of revenue that they can handle the testing and, and all the, uh, you know, potential negatives that come with playing. Teddy, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to join us, man. I hope uh, all this stuff that we've talked about does not happen and we're just crazy and uh, we're all nuts and uh, we wake up tomorrow and it's like, poof, everything is great. But uh, I don't expect that to be the case, unfortunately. I'm with you, brother. Hopefully that happens. It's been a pleasure being with you. Appreciate you. Teddy Greenstein, a longtime writer for the Chicago Times, covering the Big Ten and Northwestern, and uh, appreciate him taking the time to join us today. Man, that is just not good news, getting that text. It's like it's like when you know something's going to happen, but you're, just, you're trying to hold out one sliver of hope, and anything that dices into that little sliver, you're like, nope, I don't want to hear it. And I'm like, man, come on. Don't, I don't, you don't want it to be true because – 
what are we going to do? It, because it sucks. Yeah, I know. It's, but, but I mean, you know, here, here's the thing, Jim, and, and this is where I say all the time that as human beings, we learn to adapt to things. And, you know, if, I've referred to this so many times in the last few months in, in that in March the 13th, when you and I were sitting at the tap in Indianapolis, getting ready for the, you know, after a big win for Indiana basketball team, getting ready to play the next day. If you'd have told us at that point they were going to cancel the rest of the Big Ten tournament. Sports, and sports, NCAA sports as we tournament. know it ended right yeah. that day. If you would have told us all these dominoes that have happened since then, we would have looked at each other and been like, what are you smoking? Like, that doesn't even make any sense. And it's, not, it's not possible. It's not possible for that to happen in this country. That is, they would not allow truly. it to happen. From because we we say this all the time, money dominates everything. Money dictates what's going to happen, and the amount of money lost would just be too big for any of those things to happen. And they've all happened. So now, when you you know, I'm reading right now online about the report of you know the Big Ten, twelve to two, the colleges themselves are voting to not play, and we know the colleges are the ones that are going to get hurt the most. They're the ones that are going to have to make the toughest decisions as far as what sports to cut and who to lay off and. You know, what What are your coaches going to have to take in salary because they're not going to be have a season to, to pay them? And so football feeds these other programs. All of them. All when, of them. When, when, when people talk about, well, what about, what? dude, it feeds these other sports. Football, look at, look at, look at uh, a, a place like the University of Georgia or, or probably even Alabama. Not only, I mean, you talk about Indiana University having two sports that feeds everything else. At those schools, you probably have one sport that feeds everything else. They probably feed the basketball program. I would guess their basketball programs lose money. And, you know, so you're talking about canceling the season of the one sport that feeds everybody else. And I hate to be that way, but that's the way that it is. And, and you know, people have worked so hard on the Title IX issues and all of that in, in the equality and getting more women's sports in, involved. That's who's going to suffer. I mean, football's not going to go away. Whenever we find a vaccine, football's going to be back. But those other sports aren't going to snap their fingers and start right back up. And I don't think that we've seen uh, – losing football is more devastating than basketball from from the standpoint of – From a revenue. On, on towns and all that because there's yeah. no tailgating. There's nobody coming into town to tailgate. There's nobody here buying stuff. There's nobody here staying in hotels. Uh, it's just on and on and on, and it's like – and come you know, on. It, here, here's a, and, and this is pie in the sky. It's easy for me to sit here and say, because it wouldn't be me involved. But I mean, I, you know, I was reading the article yesterday about, could they put, make Indianapolis the quarantine city for big 10 college football, bring the kids in here, give them their own, ho- bring each team as his own hotel. And they stay here for two months and they play a, you know, a, a 10, 10 game conference season. I mean, yeah, it sounds like it'd be great if it was Indianapolis here. If they said to do that in Chicago, it wouldn't benefit Indianapolis. So it wouldn't be as big a deal to us. But I'd still like to see it happen. I don't care where. You can put it in Lincoln, Nebraska, for all I care. Ironically, uh, we've got a Zoom meeting today with Tom Allen uh, as soon as we get off of here, as a matter of fact. So we'll see what he has to say, and we'll have that for tomorrow. But all indications are just continuing to come that um, it does not look good for yeah. us to have college football. And – that has gone from – and my emotions are going – I was like, in the beginning, I was up. Then I'm like, no, nah, it ain't going to happen. Then I then I got a resurgence over the last week, and, and now it's back down. You talk about a roller coaster ride of like – and now looking forward, this is freaking August, the beginning of August. Now, like, what are we going to do in August and September and October? Hope that we get to November now and, we, and that there's basketball? it's like, well, that's what I was saying a minute ago. I mean, we adapt to things because, you know, this news today that college football is probably going to be pushed back, you know, several months ago would have just devastated us. And today it is devastating me. It is, it is, but we're almost kind of like, yeah, I I half expected it. Uh, It's, it it is devastating, man. It's, it's just, Ah, oh well. But hey, we talked a little bit earlier about Bruiser Flint possibly being. Uh, it's that's because there's an opening there. Uh, Kenny, it was a Kenny Payne, I think. Yeah. Uh, yep. Possibly move into the NBA, maybe I think. Uh, and then there's a long time relationship between John Calipari and. Um, I mean, do Flint. we know? Like, has there been? Has there been any other information? Or are we just 
are we just surmising that because they've been a past relationship? Like, is well, no, I th- there's, I think there's been talks. Uh, there has been. Okay. Yeah. But I, it's, it's like, everything is fluid on what happens here. I don't think that pain situation is done yet, or I haven't looked. Yeah. To see you know what though? I mean, I, here's what I don't understand is you're either in or you're out. And if, 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 if I'm Archie Miller and, and none of this, like, I, I'm not saying bruiser has said anything. So I'm just basing it off of what I read on Twitter, which, probably shouldn't base a whole lot off of but i'll say if if bruiser's on the fence of whether he would go there or not if that conversation has ever happened he'd be gonzo in my world and i'm not saying he has i I like bruiser friend a lot he's a good guy but he wouldn't be he wouldn't be on my coaching staff if he was waiting to hear whether somebody else from kentucky was leaving or not uh, as far as the replacement, if that happens, that'll give us something to talk about as well, and we'll do that. And <laughs> we'll do that in the overtime period. I want to thank Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago Times for taking time to join us today. I Man, he's a longtime senior writer up there covering the Big Ten, and uh, things don't look good right now uh, for for football, for college football. That is, and that means for anything else, college sports. I saw somebody ask about, well, what's going to happen with the club sports? I'm like, what are you talking about? Hang on. If you're listening on the radio, uh, you can go on to the overtime and hear a little bit more. Other than that, we appreciate you joining us as always and look forward to doing it for you again tomorrow. Uh, for Todd Leary and Jimmy, I'm Jim Coyle. Do something nice for somebody. Wear your mask. Until then, I'll see you on the radio. All right, we're back over time. Uh, we were talking about Bruiser Flint to UK. Now you can say what you really think. We're off the air live. I mean, I, here, here's what I don't want to say. Like, I don't know if Bruiser Flint's talked to him at all. Like, I, I, so we're just speculating on the fact of what I've read online. But, but there's the, usually how, how does, back channels. It usually just works through back channels. But that conversation doesn't have, like, if Archie Miller knows that, if I'm Archie Miller, I walk in the office this morning and I'm like, hey, dude, it's not like it, it's is so this past true. It's not, it's not like that. That's not how it happens. I mean, it's how you're, just it up happen, front, you're just up front said, Hey man, this guy's going here. There's this potential. Uh, it, and my point most, is if that's the case, it, so if it's up front and that conversation did happen, I'm not saying it did, but if that conversation did happen, I hand him his papers. He's out the door. You're either all in or you're all out. It's not, it's, well, there's no upgrade from Indiana. I don't think that works in the coaching world, but. Uh, with, with dealing with adults like that, you have to, if they're going to be honest with you in up front, you have to give them respect back. You can't have people being open and honest with you and then cutting their heads off because no one else okay. is going to be honest with you from that point. But forward. bruiser bruiser's not like a third level assistant. I mean, there's, there's no upgrade. If you, that's just saying he thinks Kentucky as a university and a program is, is an upgrade over Indiana. Who cares? You're not losing anything. So why putting that kind of effort into it to me is like, hey, who cares? Just go. You just move on to your next deal. I mean, people are going to move on. He obviously has no desire to be a head coach again. Uh, just moving from assistant to assistant's job for the last however many thousand years, uh, and it's just time to move on. You, he. This is not a place I, where I, he's going to be for fifteen years. So yeah, let him go. A and then, lot of people. A lot of times, you and I will will kind of banter back and forth on things. You know, and, and I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying I'm, there's not a statement you've ever made. I've just more moron than what you just said. It does matter. If a guy's not all in to your university. Now, look, Indiana is not Indiana State or IUPUI or IP Fort Wayne or, you know, a smaller school where it's a stepping stone job. It's a destination job. And if you're going to leave one assistant's job to go take another one, I could not disagree with you more. It does matter to me. And if Bruiser Flint's not all in, I shouldn't even use his name because I don't know anything about whether this conversation's even happened. I'm saying if an assistant on your staff is not 100% in, he's out.
That's uh, that's just the way it is. It's not a business when it comes to that point. Right. I don't think that it's that he's not all in. I just think it's probably time, and it may have been a <laughs> there may have been a conversation that's that it's time to to shake up the staff, uh, or it may have been said, "Hey, man, that could be a great opportunity uh, for you." Uh, whatever, and it allows Archie to do something different with his staff because I'll be honest with you, and, and I don't know that I'm not in the inside uh, on talking to them every day, but we don't hear Bruiser's name tied to a lot of recruits, if any. Uh, and that's one of the biggest purposes of having a well known assistant coach is that they can help you recruiting. Archie doesn't need any help recruiting the state, and they're not doing anything outside of the state. So uh, maybe it's just time to upgrade the staff. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't. I don't have a problem with them. I mean, I, I want. I'd like to have some stability and have some guys that are kind of there for a long time. I mean, look at look at the you know the Dukes and the Kentuckys and the Michigan States of the world. They've got pillar assistant coaches that have been there for ten or fifteen years. They've got guys that have been there for a long time. And, it, it, you know, the, the, the structure kind of all stays intact and, and the same. And, you know, this, this coaching staff, the way it is, these guys that are there, these four guys, three assistants and a head coach, have been together for one year. I, I want it to stay, I want it to stay more of a norm. But, I mean, also, hey, if somebody's not bought in 100%, I want them gone. It's, it's my university. It's the one I choose to root for, and I, that, I'm just telling you how I want it. it. Doesn't mean that's everybody else has to agree with me. I'm just telling you, I don't want an assistant coach on my roster that even would consider going to Kentucky. Tim asks if no football, how many juniors will opt for the NFL draft? Um, well, I don't know. We just saw a whole bunch of basketball players come back without the possibility, without knowing for sure that they're going to have basketball. Uh, I mean, I'm not laughing at it. It's, it's just a weird thing. It's not funny. It's just weird, just crazy, strange. Uh, t- Ryan hit the text line. Not sure. Let's see. The Pacers, I think the Pacers have a great opportunity at the bubble to get the Eastern Conference Finals. Eh, they've been playing pretty well. I don't know about that, but we'll see. Uh, we've got a lot of long ways to go for that, but uh, uh, there's no doubt. They have definitely played well in the bubble, man. Yeah, they have. I mean, there's, you know, certain teams adapt, I think, better to it than others. And certain teams, you know, came into it with an agenda and they need to move up to a certain point or or get themselves playing well. And, you know, the Pacers have dealt with a lot of adversity and injuries, but you you wouldn't really know it by watching them on the floor. They've they've played well together. Yes, they have. We've got a a Zoom meeting with Tom Allen today, as I said, and and – I think that is a meeting that is changing by the second. Yeah, I, I don't think be surprised that, if that is, doesn't get pushed back to later in the day. No, I don't know if it gets pushed back, but uh, the, the content will definitely change between now and the next hour that it happens. I mean, it's nuts um, how fluid well, I mean, this will there has be, gotten. He just met with he just met with everyone a week ago. I mean, will there be any other questions other than conversations about the Big Ten meetings that took place this weekend? Pretty much not. Probably not. But and and the thing is. He's not going to have any answers. He's right. not going to. He's he wasn't there. He doesn't know what they said. They're not. The head coach is not who they're talking to. They'll talk to the AD and the president, and those guys will talk to the coaches. But um, yeah, it's. But until the Big Ten makes an overall announcement, you're not going to get any individual coach to step out and say, "Well, this is what's going on." No, I mean, they're, they're just, just going to wait till it's announced by the Big Ten. You just continue to move forward and hope uh, you can continue to work out with your team and you and know just, go to. Go back to college basketball for a second. I mean, I know football comes first when it comes to the, the you know the time frame of chronologically. But if, if you look at basketball, let's let's just say terrible scenario: they cancel football and they cancel basketball. I can see and I hang myself the whole, the whole G League thing that where where they started that one team. I can see that expanding into like a ten team little bubble league of them putting that thing together with all they'll have to, athletes. they'll have to. So we have something to watch some sports I, and it, and it would be insanely successful. The, what I don't want to happen is I don't want that to become a footprint and then to see how successful that can be. And then just start taking, you know, it almost being like a one year farm system from college to the NBA. Cause if you're going to go off or if there's going to be no season and you're going to go off for Luca Garza, all of a sudden now, 
you know, a million dollars or half a million dollars to come play in this league, this league for two months, you're not going to get very many guys to turn that down if there's not going to be a basketball season. Nope. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that's going to be the case from all the indications. Uh, unless unless something drastic happens and, and Dr. Falsey comes out in about 10 minutes and says they've got a, a, a vaccine, I don't think we're going to have a football season. And I and that was not a statement that I planned on making before I came on the air. Yeah, I know. That's how I, hey, fluid I, I didn't this wanna is. Argue, I didn't want to argue with Steve when he was on here, but – you know, when he made the statement of, of basketball is not as much of a contact sport as football, it doesn't make any – I've heard somebody else make that statement. That doesn't make any sense to me because you're talking about skin versus skin a lot more often in basketball than you are – and that's contact. I mean, we're not just talking about hard hits. I mean, we're talking about your contact. You're a, you have a lot more contact in a basketball game than you do in a football game. Yeah. And I just – I don't understand. Like, I, It doesn't matter. I just – I've heard two – People, two different people. I think they're they're measuring way. it. They're measuring it in the wrong way. Uh, I, I think they're measuring it as far as impact, but as far as frequency, no. Yeah. Basketball's, basketball's worse way because much more of an actual. There's no contact there's no protective barriers whatsoever. Touch, versus touch. yeah, touch yeah. versus touch. It's way more of a contact sport than football. Absolutely. Well, man, that's going to it just. Uh, I, I wish I had good news to talk yeah, about. It, it's really depressing to have. Sad news. I mean, I don't even have sad news, and I already and I feel depressed. We're preparing but, for the sad news. Yeah. Um, hopefully, tomorrow when we're talking to you, that uh, we're saying, "What well, that didn't happen, and and we were wrong." But uh, not expecting that to be the case. But we're going to talk to Tom Allen today as well, so we'll have that tomorrow uh, when we come back as well. And uh, and otherwise, we're going to be here every day for you, no matter what. We're going to have guests. We're going to talk about it. We're going to be. Uh, Rolling along. We've done it for, for four months, five months, however long we've been doing this, and we'll keep doing it. We're, we've been here, and we'll stay. Make sure you go to thehoosier.com for complete coverage. We've got a lot going on there as well. But uh, that's going to wrap it up, Todrick. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I wish we could be more positive. But, you know, it's funny because you talk about uh, – I tell people sometimes what we do on the radio and all that, and they're like, well, what are you talking about? And I'm like, you know, I don't know. We just got to make stuff up. It, it rolls. Yeah, we, we usually – it's that's not a problem, but I, it, it's, not, it's a lot more fun and a lot less work when you don't have to do that. But, oh, well. Oh, yes. well, sure. Until tomorrow, for the guys, I'm Jim Coyle. Go out, do something nice for somebody, say something nice, wear your mask. Until then, I will see you on the radio.